Hello, everybody. Once again, it's the Coach Jay McCauley Show, brought to you by RJ Rockers. I'm Jim Noble. Jay joins us, of course, from Spartanburg. Uh, this is my satellite Asheville office, so I hope you like my, my background. And, and Jay, the highs and lows of college basketball epitomized in the last couple of weeks for the Terriers. But the one thing I take away as we head into the stretch run is all the goals that you guys had at the beginning of the season, compete for a Southern Conference championship, try to get a berth in the NCAA tournament, play well down the stretch heading into, heading into Asheville. They're all still there for the taking, are they not? That's absolutely right. Um, you know, I think if you asked a lot of people outside of our program heading into this year, if we would be in sole second place right now uh, in mid-February with four games to go, you know, a lot of people would call us crazy. But uh, listen, uh, there's a lot of parity in the league. Uh, we're really focusing on just being the best versions of ourself uh, and playing really, really hard and playing hard for each other. When we do those two components, we're really good. And uh, we'll certainly have a few more opportunities to do that. And uh, hopefully, like you said, be playing our best basketball heading into Nashville. The last couple of weeks, schedule-wise, we kind of knew it was going to be a brutal stretch. You guys had gone through a, a, a lot of makeup games before that. We had a home game against VMI that we were in control and then got into overtime and the legs just weren't there. And then you head down the road to Furman. We've used that word so many times on this show, resiliency. Still, the ability to come back against a team of that caliber on their home floor when they think they've got the game in the bag, probably with about 10 minutes to go, what did you learn about your team that afternoon in Traveler's Rest? Yeah, a few things. Number one, we got it. We, we got it in our locker room, what it takes, the toughness, the uh, togetherness. Uh, and, and the trick of this whole deal this whole year is trying to expand that with young guys, some older guys that are desperate to win and some young guys trying to figure out what this is all about and the, how long it can be the journey and, and the grind and it's in there. And that's what we tell our team all the time. We just got to find longer stretches of playing that way. And I thought, you know, a lot of ways, some of those teams we faced when we play that way, including Furman, they were a little shocked with how hard we played and how together we were at the most critical moments. So we celebrated that win. We noted that, but we, we knew we wasted a lot of possessions and a lot of mistakes that we could get better at. And, uh, Certainly hadn't been able to do that this past week, but I look forward to Wednesday mm -hmm. and giving our guys an opportunity to showcase that even more. We talked a lot about Storm Murphy uh, on this show. I, I thought the Furman game was peak Storm. 24 points, 9 for 13 from the field, and a swagger that I don't know that I've seen. Maybe you see it a lot more than we do. Um, a swagger while that comeback it was going, people like to talk trash to Storm a lot. Little guy, you can't guard me. You've, you've heard it all on the sidelines. Storm started to give it back a little bit. And I think that really that really played, everybody kind of fed off that. Yeah, he's playing with an edge and uh, he doesn't want this season to end. He wants this thing to be, he wants to leave his mark. And, uh, you know, he gathered our team around before the Furman game. This wasn't always like him and he just, so we're not going to lose this game. And uh, sure enough, you know, he speaks he speaks loud in our locker room and people listen. And uh, those guys really rallied around him. And what an effort, you know, to exhaust his tank and give everything he got to to the team. In that moment, uh, you know, he helped us get out of there with a win. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of good ball left in our ball club, including Storm. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to tipping it up again. Yeah, I think, uh, and then obviously coming off that Furman, when you're back in first place, you've got the target on your back, and then you run into a couple of teams, you know, Chattanooga might be playing as good as anybody in the league right now. Lamont Paris has them finally, I think, gelling a little bit, and yeah. they, they really play tough against you, against us in Spartanburg, led wire to wire. Coming out of that game, the freshman, you made a concerted effort to kind of say, all right. We're not playing well with the starters. Let's see what the kids can do. Tell me about the thought process going into that and how you felt coming out of that game. Yeah, going into that game, I, I felt good about our team. Um, you know, I think I think some of the guys physically and mentally were a little fried after the last couple of weeks. 
so, you know, at, at a certain point in the game, you got a decision to make. You, either you're, you're making shots or things are clicking or they're not. And obviously they, they weren't clicking that night. We were a little flat in some areas. And, you know, for the freshmen, those that haven't played as much to continue to work while they wait, every day have that mentality of doing it for the team and staying, staying in the moment, waiting for their opportunity and to come in there. And we won the second half, 43 to 40 and uh, shot nearly 60% from the field, doing the things that we were preaching. Um, you know, I was really proud of their effort. And we tried to, we tried to kind of bottle that up and, and give our freshmen some confidence and, and also get some older guys back on track. But basketball is a tricky thing and confidence is a tricky thing and you can ride the momentum either way. And we're just trying to remember who we are and when we're really good, we're just really, really tough and we're playing together. And uh, Chattanooga is playing really good ball. You saw that last night again. They've had two transfers eligible after Christmas. That's taken some time for them to get gelled, as you you put it. But they're they're gelling with the right pieces at the right time, and uh, they're going to be a tough tough uh, bunch to beat, I think, down the home stretch. And hopefully, we get another crack at those guys. Yeah, and then of course you run into an ETSU team that was just playing desperate after they they, they lost three of four, and and everything they shot went in, and everything we shot didn't. So you you kind of wrap up that week. You go ahead. And when we come back, we'll look at the weeks ahead for the Terriers. It all begins with the home game Wednesday night against the Citadel. We'll talk about that when we come back. Whopper takes down Carolina and the Furman Paladins have defeated the The underdog. The long shot. The nobody from nowhere never going to happen in your dreams, kid. 100 to one shot. We know something about that. We're with you every step of the way. And welcome back to the Coach Jay McCauley Show, brought to you by RJ Rockers. Jay, you get a shot at those Bulldogs uh, coming up on Wednesday night at Jerry Richardson Indoor Stadium. The Citadel opened up a lot of eyes with a win over Whopper down in Charleston. I got a funny feeling you guys have been itching for another shot at this team, a team that's playing very well and a team that's proven that this year for a change, they can win on the road. Yeah. Yeah. They're a tough bunch. And, uh, you know, Duger's got them playing really, really well and believing and, you know, all their losses have been close, you know, and uh, for the most part, and they've beaten some of the best teams in the league. And it just goes to show you the parody we got here in the SoCon as we've talked about many times, but, you know, looking back at game one, uh, we may have played our best 15 to 16 minutes of the entire year in that first half. We were up 34 to 17, if you remember, and 42 to 28. And then they went on a run like they always do. They are up tempo, fast, concede some things defensively to get it back offensively quick. Uh, and we've got to do a better job of kind of eliminating those runs and staying in the moment and not getting so caught up in their style and more caught up in what we did in those first 15 minutes. So got a lot of respect for those guys. Our guys got uh, our attention is, is, is high right now. And we're looking forward to tipping it up again here tomorrow. It's funny as you look through these final four games, you, you say you know, on paper, if you hadn't watched anybody play, if you just looked at records, Citadel, Western Carolina, Samford, winnable games, certainly. And they are winnable games. But boy, this conference is just cannibalizing itself right yeah. now. And, and there are no gimmies. I think we've seen that not only with our games, but the games all around the league. So do your players get that when you hammer home that message all the time, all the time? Sometimes it sinks in, sometimes it doesn't. But I think they've seen it up with their own eyes to understand that they can't, they can't just roll the basketballs out and win any game in this league this year. Yeah, I mean, Liz, you know this. It's like uh, a student with a teacher. You know if a teacher is genuine or not or knows what's going on or not. not I'm not going to trick anything up. These guys are smart guys, you know, and they can, they can read between the lines. We know what to do. We just got to choose to do it the right way and the hard way, you know, the Wofford way of gritty, nasty, uh, and together. And – you know, every night is going to be a battle and we got to be that R word resilient every single night because there's going to be runs. There's going to be 
things that don't go our way, calls that don't go our way, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And for the most part, we've done that. Uh, but Wednesday night will be another challenge with that group coming in here confident, playing playing well, and uh, we'll, we'll need to be, you know, clicking on all cylinders. Yeah, there's a little game against uh, Furman to cap off the regular season that's kind of down the road a little bit, but we'll be doing our – our next show right after that, as we look forward to the Southern Conference Tournament. So can't wait for that one at Jerry Richardson Indoor Stadium in a couple of weeks. Um, before we take our last break, it's, you mentioned the guys, you know, this, these are the dog days of the season. Legs, you know, at, you've been looking at each other for, for, for months. You know, <laughs> midterms were last week. You, they got a lot going on. How do you get the guys through this mentally and physically? Yeah, we, we try to get creative. You know, it's the only thing you can do and uh, keep things light on the days. It's just a gut feeling that you got to go with, um, you know, and making sure they understand and stay sharp in some areas and, you know, enjoy the moment a little bit. And uh, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of things flying at these guys right now, but I keep reminding them of the positives, you know, of we're in second place. We have a chance for a regular season title right in front of us if we take it one day at a time and be ourselves and just remind them that there is a lot of good stuff left. And, uh, you know, if we just catch that wave at the right time and ride it, we can, uh, we can be a special bunch. You've seen that this year. So yeah. everyone's kind of dealing with different things. It's a matter of, of, of buying into the team and the, and, and the teammates over yourself. And as soon as we do that, you know, I think we'll be just fine. All right. We come back, we're going to shift gears a little bit and talk about recruiting and how you go about that while you're trying to play a season at the same time. That's next on the Coach Jay McCauley Show. Welcome back to the Coach Jay McCauley Show. All right, we're in the middle of the season, but the work never stops, Jay, as you look to improve the team each year. And obviously you're in the you're all in on the season right now, but recruiting is almost a 365-day-a-year a, a business in college basketball. It's changed this year. You can't go see everybody in person. You do a lot of this stuff, Zooming, a lot of phone calls. How have you and your staff adjusted to the new world that we hope doesn't last forever, but the new recruiting world in terms of the limitations that you have. Yeah, everything's been flipped upside down uh, with recruiting. You can't go out, can't have anyone come visit you. Um, you know, all the recruiting rules in terms of eligibility has changed as well. So guys getting another year of eligibility, um, prep schools, high school seasons being canceled. You can't watch them live. You know, kids are playing in mass. Some are not. Some can't, tournaments are being canceled. You know, it's just so different, you know, and that's when you got to really rely, I think, on your staff and who you are as a program to really dive into getting to know these prospects. And fortunate enough for us, we had one already signed in the early fall and uh, we have one to get and we're in no rush with that. We want to make sure we get the right guy. Um, because of only having two seniors this year. So, you know, we're in a little different situation than maybe most that have to get three, four or five, uh, but we've been really meticulous on who we're targeting, what we need. And you only find that out with a young group as you go along the season. And we certainly got about a month left here to ultimately decide that. But um, a lot of Zoom calls, a lot of calls in reliance on high school coaches that we trust and regions that we trust that know who Wofford is. And uh, for that, I like where Wofford stands in the recruiting ranks. In terms of your recruiting philosophy, do you recruit for position, for need, or do you recruit for a basketball player and a, a, a Wofford fit above and beyond that? It's a great question, Jim. Um, we're always stacking, you know, layers on each position, but we're essentially a positionless basketball team. So it just goes back to what you said at the end. You know, you look at all the Wofford great players, they're all tough. They all love to work and be in the gym constantly. 
you look at their track record, they're always winning in AAU or high school. And they, they're somewhat overlooked and they play with a big chip on their shoulder. And when you get those components in a guy that maybe a bigger school or another school is like, ah, he's a little shorter, a little too whatever, you know, that's gold to us, you know, and we, uh, we like to find those guys and they fit in great in our culture. So it's more of that and then figuring out the rest with our positionless style uh, than, than, than what most people go about doing. Does each member of your staff have a maybe a geographical area or a, a, an area of need with the basketball team? Kind of tell you how you break things down with with Dwight and Paul and Will and Adam. Yeah, Dwight Perry is our recruiting coordinator, so he handles kind of the organizational component of the classes that we recruit, the junior class, the senior class, and then anyone younger than that who doesn't have an academic record yet in high school per se. Uh, the contacts that we use to kind of look at those guys as they become juniors and seniors, but they all have different states, different regions. And, you know, Jim, as we've won tournaments uh, and, and gone to the NCAA tournament, those regions have expanded. And you naturally think of Wofford as an academic institution that reaches across the country and now internationally some, but that's gotten even bigger in our own recruiting ranks and case in point, Sam Godwin and a few other guys, that we brought in here the last couple of years. So each guy has their own region and we, uh, we rely on contacts out there to help us. And uh, you know, it's been working well for us here. Yeah. And that was going to be kind of my next question is specifically with the run two years ago uh, into the second round of the NCAA tournament. You know, I've talked to people in the admissions office that said Wofford's profile really raised there and the yeah. applications went up. I've, I've got to think that it, you may be seeing some of the residual effect with there where at least now, even though we're the, I think the third smallest school playing division one basketball, the name recognition is there. And then when people know the name, then they can look further and see what the school and the program are all about. Yeah. Without a doubt. I mean, 10 years ago, you'd hear go at the airport and like, where's Wolford, you know, and <laughs> now they're like, we saw Wofford in the NCAA tournament. I got recruits and prospects. Some of them that are here now were like, we had you going to the Sweet 16 two years ago. It's just a really neat dynamic that we obviously have to feed off of as a school, as a college, and as a, as a program, we intend to do so. Got a lot to sell here. You know that, Jim. You just got to be able to get on campus and feel the environment that college, the college has to offer and obviously our program. So we'll continue to feed off that and hopefully continue those winning traditions. Well, you guys haven't swung and missed very often. I think your batting per percentage is probably up about 950, which would be you'd be Hall of Famers in the in the in the baseball Hall of Fame and uh, keep it going on the recruiting trail. Let's wrap things up. Um, you, we talked. Let's go kind of full circle back to what we talked about. You told the team that everything they have to work for is there for the taking. Um, your gut feeling about this bunch right now as we head into the last two weeks of the regular season? Yeah, my gut feeling is that uh, they're more connected than ever. Um, you know, you lose a couple games, everyone thinks the world's going to come to an end. Uh, coaches included, you know, uh, let's be let's be honest. Uh, but the next day you wake up and you realize you got a bunch of guys that are committed to this college, to our program. They love being together. And to see our guys compete like they did yesterday in practice after a day off, to test again Sunday, come in, get treatment, you know, and still go through the grind and show up Monday ready to roll, more convicted, more enthusiastic than ever. It's a good sign for things to come. And, you know, we just got to take it one day at a time and uh, realize there's a lot, of, lot more good going on than, than bad. And, uh, what, ride that wave, as I said earlier. I often think that that players and coaches have it easier dealing with the, the coming off a, a tough stretch because you can go out there and do something about it. Media, fans, they got to sit there and bite their nails into the next game. You know, they don't see all the work that's going on behind the scenes. And you guys can go out there and apply yourselves and do something about it. That's the beauty of sports is, is. you've always got a next chance. And I think this last stretch sets up well for you, obviously. goes back to what we said. We know you got to play hard. We know the other teams aren't just going to say, oh, it's Wofford and, 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 and shrink. But 
it's been such an entertaining season, not, not, not an easy season, but to watch this conference develop and, and, and evolve. And it's a different conference than it was even a couple of years ago. It's been so much fun to watch. So we always appreciate the time. Get back downstairs to the gym. We'll see you Wednesday night and we will do this again in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we got we got some students and a few people coming to the games tomorrow that we're excited about, and hopefully that uh, energizes our guys. And and as always, everyone that tunes into this show, our games, that listens to you, Jim and Tom, we really appreciate it. it means a lot to us heading down the home stretch, and uh, we're looking forward to playing for you guys. All right. On that note, for Coach Jim McCauley, I'm Jim Noble. Thanks once again for listening to the Jim McCauley Show, brought to you by RJ Rogers.